Carter also has a Winston Cup car. He'll be doing double duty, the ARCA race and the Winston Cup race, the Daytona 500 by STP next Sunday. Car pace car pulls off the racetrack, and here we go. Here comes the pole sitter, Jeff Purvis, leading them down. The green flag waves, and we are underway with the ARCA 200. With the restrictor plates, Bob, it takes them a while to get up their speed. When they start off of turn two, we might expect to see some of them start fanning out, maybe even see some three abreast racing down the backstretch. Meanwhile, the front row is just exactly like they lined up at 30 miles an hour. Beginning to build up the momentum, but you're right, Benny, the first two cars are right where they were when the green flag dropped. They stay side by side as they head for the 31 degrees of banking between turns number three and four. It is Jeff Purvis on the inside, and there's the in-car camera carried by Jim Sauter, and you can see how close the cars are as they come off the fourth corner and complete lap number one with Purvis about four or five inches ahead of Loy Allen. And I tell you what, you can see just how these cars wiggle around at 190 miles an hour, and yes, Folks, they're running 190 miles an hour as they go through the corner, side by side, just inches apart. There's a bit of a breeze blowing here this afternoon. From the first turn down the backstretch, they will have a tailwind as they go down the backstretch, and they will be coming right into the wind as they come through the trioval. Still no movement up front. They are still side by side. Looks like these cars are dead even. You'll see one of them get just a little bit out in front, and then he runs into that wall of air up there that has been opened up. Then the other one might go out a little bit, so they just can't either of them get an advantage on the other. But the big spoilers that they're running on these cars this year is allowing them to run that way and, and the car be pretty stable. We have only had one minor spin during the entire speed weeks here as far as stock car racing is concerned. That was in ARCA qualified. So indeed, the cars are very stable this year with that enlarged spoiler. Still up front, it is Jeff Purvis on the inside. He was the pole sitter, Loy Allen Jr. on the outside. John Kernan has a comment on Loy Allen Jr. Bob, this morning at the driver's meeting, talking with Loy, he was a little bit concerned. He thought Jeff Purvis may rock it out in front of everybody and take off. But the one thing that may work in his favor, he's starting on that outside line, so he's having Humble to higher degree. Big crash in turn number three. One car loose, and it's going to take out many, many cars. When you have something happen up front, and they're still coming in there, when one car up front gets in trouble, then everybody else barreling in there at full speed, they simply can't slow the cars down quick enough to avoid it. I believe it was the 55 car of Tim Speedwell that, yeah. that lost control. And man, I'm telling you what, how many cars was in that crash, Ned? I don't know, about two-thirds of the field, it, it looks, looks like. that way. Yes, yeah, because Tim Fiedel was started fourth. Yeah, and he was running there or fifth or so when, when the incident occurred, so everybody behind him had virtually nowhere to go. A couple of cars coming down pit road as the yellow flag is waving. But there you can see some of the carnage. One car is on That's fire. Peter, That's Gibbons. Peter Gibbons. Yep. Yes, it is, the Canadian. Extinguishing the fire that broke out in the front of that car. Well, let's take a look at it. Here we see, uh-oh, it looks uh -oh. like Shaq just yeah. barely touched Tim Fiedel. And now Shaq goes up, makes contact with cars on the outside. That was Bob Shaq's in the blue car, the Prano Auto Parts car. It looked like he just barely made contact with Fido's car and the racetrack, there's nothing, no place for the guys to go. And it doesn't take much at the speeds they're running, just as you say, a slight tap. And spent that's Gary Bradbury, I think, around. on the outside. Is that 78? Yes, Gary Brad in the red, red car. Jimmy Horton comes in in 32. There's a hood or something flying through the air like a kite. <laughs> A lot of good race cars torn up. There goes Bobby Bowser, the champion, then on the inside. Here's a, and here's the chain reaction that happened behind the original spin. Man, nowhere to go. I looked at the racetrack is completely yeah. blocked. There's nowhere for anyone to go. At 30 miles an hour, you couldn't drive through there. Well, There's there Bob Shack's car. Yeah. The blue car. I believe that could be Horton behind him in the 32, maybe. Uh, some heavy damage to Horton's car. There's, There's Red, Red Farmer. Farmer. He was in it. He got clipped. He came on down, came around, came down pit road. Uh, John Kernan is uh, down in the pit area with the crew chief. 
with, with Doug Taylor, the crew chief for Tim Fidua. And Doug, one of those unfortunate incidents, leaving you guys very disappointed. Tim has radioed in and told you he's okay, but can he get the car back around? No, I don't believe so, John. The, the car's pretty bad. You know, it's just a shame in, in this race. It's a longer race, and, uh, you know, the car was running really good today. It, it's, uh, it's just really a shame. This crew's really worked hard. Mark Dew built us a heck of a motor. We felt like we had a good shot at winning it, you know, and Timmy was sure doing a good job. And uh, uh, one of the guys got up into him down there, and it turned us around. And, well, as you can see, what the damage has done to about half the field. So it's just a shame. Well, they'll try and pack it up. They'll survey the damage somewhat, then pack it up. But they will be back here next week to run in the Goodies 300. Fetal are running the entire schedule this year on the Bush Grand National Circuit. So the race has been red flagged. The cars have stopped here in the tri-oval as they uh, clean up the damage. Jerry Punch is with Bobby Gerhardt. And Bobby climbs out of the car. First of all, Bobby, your Chevrolet heavily damaged behind us. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I really didn't hit anything that hard. It just uh, it was awful scary there for a minute. They started spinning, hitting one another. You just couldn't see anything. Did you see what happened in front of you? You were about uh, ninth or tenth on that lap. It, it looked like Bobby Shack and Fido got together. I'm not sure who did what, but just cars went everywhere, and there's just nowhere to go. A tough break for... Bobby Gerhardt, his Chevrolet behind us, heavily damaged. He is out of it here in the ARCA 200. And for several other drivers, we do have just about half the field that was involved in this crash. We count about 20 cars that had made it back to the tri-oval here and will take the green flag when the race resumes. Here it is once again. Bob Schacht is a blue car. He goes up, touches a red car. That's Tim Fieldwood. They both lose control, and now the racetrack suddenly becomes totally, completely blocked. These cars running, what, net 100 miles an hour? Well, more than that, I would say, Benny, as they, as they come in there, and uh, as you say, nowhere to go, and the brakes simply won't stop those cars that quick. They were too close on them. There's Bob Keselowski. He was a former champion in ARCA. Finished second in points last year. He sits in his car waiting for the restart, but it is heavily damaged, and I think there's some question as to whether he will be able to restart. Well, we're off to a rather uh, bad start here as the red flag is out because of a multi-car crash in turn three. 